What is up my friends and how's it going? Welcome back to the 13th episode of our Let's Play series as Pathia with your fellow comrade Summary. We are at the halfway mark of the series and we have come a long way from owning a single region in Nisa and we are almost, almost at the Achaemenid Empire's extremities. We have about four subjects, uh, Bactria and Zranka in the east, to the north we have the Hake as well as the Pontus who we managed to subjugate in the previous episode. Also in the previous episode we managed to clean up our borders against the Ptolemid factions uh, by acquiring two provinces in Nabata from them as well as their entire Anatolian holdings including the province of Ephesus. Meanwhile, the Ptolemids have been at war with both the Medevi and Muscat and they are marching their armies through Nabata and they seem to have conquered a couple of settlements in the Arabian Peninsula. However, that's not good as I do eventually want to declare war against the Ptolemids, take over Egypt as it was historically a part of the Achaemenid Empire. Um... And when that happens, I might have to fight a two-front war on this very narrow strip over here. And uh, ideally, maybe I want to cancel the military access for Egypt so that they do struggle a little bit in Arabia Magna. However, of course, the main objective of this campaign is to fight against Rome eventually. And if we can completely eliminate the faction, it's going to be quite difficult. But the main objective would be to, of course, hold Italia, perhaps the Western Mediterranean islands, and uh, help the Carthaginians kind of push back against Rome over here in Africa. They do have about just three provinces left, so maybe we might not be in time to rescue the Carthaginian faction. However, if we aren't, we might just end up releasing a few factions over here, perhaps even subjugating them. Alright, as far as what happened in the previous episode, we were, we did manage to subjugate Pontus as previously mentioned, but we also declared war against the Odrician kingdom. They were in a really strong position, they still are in a very strong position. However, upon declaring the war, we managed to at least push them out of Anatolia. However, there is still one last remaining settlement left for the Odrician Kingdom, and that is the settlement of Rhodos. It is not very well defended. It does have a small garrison as well as a small fleet. And we do have an army in the port which should be able to reach Rhodos and lay siege to it in this turn. However, the more pressing issue against the Odrician Kingdom is actually what's going on over here in the north in Nicomedia. At the uh, Bosphoran Strait, uh, they do have a lot of armies over here and that is why we have been hesitant even though I have moved a few turns into the future. And we haven't really pushed the offensive, however, situation is getting pretty bad in Nicomedia. As you can see, we are running out of supplies. A lot of our satrapies have also gathered to this uh, deadlock over here. Since I have, uh, you know, issued Anthea to be a target. And if we don't do something here really quickly, things can spiral out of control. So we have to take the initiative over here. And we have to take the risk of uh, defeating this army, pushing on and capturing Anthea. And then hopefully uh, try to wipe out these armies. Once we get rid of these four armies, then pretty much the Hellenic world should be open to easy conquest uh, since the Odrician kingdom as well as the Tolistobogia will not be able to bounce back from those losses. We do have a larger empire that can pump out a lot more troops at a quicker rate. However, that being said, uh, let us quickly hop into our political situation. As you can see, all the factions are really loyal towards us. The only thing that is probably, you know, giving them that disloyalty is uh, or are some of their factional or party traits as well as of course um, you know we started out as a tribal uh, a tribal confederation so we do have also very high influence however we are at the cusp of getting beloved of the tribes and as such we will get rid of our negative debuffs so let's just go ahead and try to achieve that 
one way to do that is send our other party characters to do some political actions and that will give them more influence therefore decreasing our own we can also send one character from this party to organize games and uh, that should you know solve the food situation we are on the border with the food situation however it's not too bad i do want to keep it at 25 or 20 minimum now as you can see here in politics we are finally at 49 percent influence and therefore beloved of the tribes that is great meanwhile quick look at our own dynasty quickly gonna hide all of the unfortunate characters that we have assassinated uh, most of our characters are completely leveled up and we are in the process of leveling up the characters further gonna go ahead praise that character for her zeal and her on a leisure time to improve her cunning finally we do have another character over here that can be improved we can do her a favor to improve her authority to the final level 10 perfect and in the next turn we can probably go ahead and start improving her zeal as well now without any further ado for this turn let us go ahead and first off fight the easier battle and that it will be the battle of rodos uh, it's not going to be a very favorable auto resolve i imagine as you can see not entirely favorable and one of the things about taking an auto resolve with the uh, horse archer armies is that you can quite easily lose your units especially i have noticed your melee tr melee cavalry your cataphract cavalry so i'm gonna go ahead and fight this battle and i will see you all in the battle all right welcome to the battle we have gone ahead with our standard nomadic horse archer deployment and as you can see we do have the parthian late nobles in their triple groups the center the far left and of course the right flanks and behind them we do have our cataphract units our Parthian late cataphracts these are the best spammable horse units in game and when i say spammable i mean they are not a general unit so they are available uh, in any number if your economy can of course sustain their upkeep they are quite expensive however they have really insane stats and to top it all they do have 120 men per unit and finally of course our general which is the Parthian late bodyguard amazing beautiful looking unit i mean cam has really done a fantastic job so let's go ahead start the battle quickly uh put all of our horse archer units into that skirmisher mode okay we are gonna move our horse archers a little bit ahead we're gonna focus them since the enemy is being a little bit passive i can focus them on you know more important troops i don't want to i don't want to keep firing at uh, you know the melee units the melee units are going to be quite easy to deal with so definitely would want to focus them on cavalry and spear units if i can and over there in the distance you can see the colossus of rhodos I don't think that's very accurate i do believe a lot of depictions show it as more like a gate gateway to the city meanwhile this horse archer unit is done dealing with that unit so we are going to go ahead try our level best to perhaps hit this unit over here Group 2, come on over here. I want you to hit this spear unit. Group 4, you can come here. This spear unit is a little bit isolated. So you can perhaps just fire your arrows over here. Meanwhile, I am going to move my cataphracts into position. Okay, this is a good angle. We are hitting them in their unshielded side. So they should be taking a lot of casualties per volley. Great. Group 
Group 4, come on out. Hey, okay, Group 3, you're done well. I'm gonna stop your fire. It will move you behind. Group 2, you're done well as well. Stop your fire, it will move you behind. Group 4, you're doing quite well. Let's see what our cataphracts are up to. Meanwhile, cataphracts on the left flank will be in a really good position over here. <clears throat> they can hit those exposed archer units. What's going on over here? Okay, perfect. And once we route these units, even uh, cataphracts on the right can be a little bit more bold. I am going to go ahead and charge because these units aren't going to last for much longer. Meanwhile, cataphracts over here can also charge. Do hope this unit breaks before my cataphracts get in range. Wonderful, I think they should. They should, they should absolutely. That is a very good volley. Come on, break. There we go. They turn off the fire at will for group 4. And move our cataphracts behind again. Meanwhile, the Carfax over here can charge at a much higher speed. And get a very good look over here at the charge. Beautiful looking unit. The enemy is trying to fire some missiles off. It is going to stop our charge a little bit, but nothing in terms of casualties. And now, yeah, they're going to make a run for it. Yeah, they shouldn't. They shouldn't survive that charge. Running away and getting charged in the back is so devastating to any unit. Because not only are you going to be charged in your backs, you're going to also not be braced for the charge. So that is one of the best case scenarios you can possibly have for your charge. And this usually doesn't tend to happen for any type of unit. Meanwhile, we do have another spear unit over here. So we are going to go ahead, try our level best to get that out of the game. It is faced this way, so I'm going to pull group 3 behind. And hit them with my left flank instead. Go ahead, try a level best for these cavalry to charge into that unit. You have another spear unit over here, and after that is done should be able to quite easily deal with the enemy unit. Meanwhile, group 3 can perform a quick charge over here. And once they do that, I'm going to quickly pull them back by just simply hitting that J key. So let's have a look over here. It should be quite devastating actually as a charge. Good charge. We can hit that J key and that moves them back to their original location. That's a wonderful charge, as you can see. Quick in, quick out. No real danger. Meanwhile, we move our cataphracts also out of there. And we can move these cataphracts towards over there. Meanwhile, group 2 has done quite well. Group 3 can go ahead and recharge that enemy. Haven't lost many units so far. Group 3 did lose a couple of units. However, this charge should be a lot more devastating to the enemy unit. Okay. Move group 3 back again. Hit that J key. Group 2. Group 2, group 2, group 2. Okay, cataphracts didn't make that gap in time, so we are going to move them behind. We do have a lot of missiles for now, so... We could just, you know, use them. However, it's this spear unit that's the last one remaining. But as far as group 3 is concerned, can just go ahead. Group 3 and group 2 can just go ahead and start... Uh, and start attacking these units. Ready to 
Meanwhile, the Cataphracts on the right flank is going to get that devastating rear charge against a retreating unit. As you can see, it just inflicts a crazy amount of damage. Wonderful. Just go ahead, put both of them in melee mode. You can perhaps just charge into that unit. And this is a really vulnerable section. Their spear unit is over here. We are going to move our horse archers closer to the settlement. Maybe try to hit these units. Move our cataphracts behind, out of the settlement. Alright, let's go ahead. Come on. Need to keep pushing up. And turn off that fire at will. Just purely charges over here. Get a general as well into that fighting. Go ahead, keep charging our horse units. And one of the things is as you keep charging through a unit, you will still inflict damage against them. So you can just simply click any other unit. Okay, move our cataphracts. Try to hit that unit. Good charge. Pull them back. And as you can see, even, even though we are pulling back, we are dealing some damage to these units. Alright, meanwhile, group 2 and 3. Perfect. Keep hitting. This is what we want. General, go ahead. Inspire everyone. Okay, group 4. Go ahead. Keep firing over there. Cataphracts over here can charge. Cataphracts over here can charge. Meanwhile, groups 2 and 3. I want you to fire against this unit. And this is, of course, the last spear unit. Good charge over here. We can pull you back. And of course, once the spear unit is done, we are going to fast forward over here. Once the spear unit is done... We pretty much can easily move about without any concern. Okay, they are done. And we, we won the battle. We don't have to deal with the enemy units that remain. They just simply route. So yeah, I'm going to see you all in the campaign. And we will have captured the settlement of Rodos for ourselves. And down goes the final holding of the Odrysian kingdoms in Asia. We do Fully control the province of Rodos. We are going to go ahead and loot the settlement. It is Greek culture, so we don't really care. We're going to quickly repair the buildings we need, dismantle the ones we don't. And as you can see, our economy is even increasing a lot more. And over here, if we have a look at our economy, you can see that Asia is already making about 25% of what Mada is making. And Rodos is completely destroyed. With just uh, simply three regions that are not fully leveled up, it is almost making 25% of the income of Mada, which is quite, uh, you know, quite developed in comparison to Asia. And there's nothing, you know, um, much that Mada can do to compete with Asia. Asia, along with Latium, Hellas, and uh, Egyptos, are is the best province in the game or are the best provinces in the game for economy as far as economy is concerned however my personal ranking is asia ranks number one followed very closely by egyptos it's really neck to neck with these two but i give this light edge to asia because asia can be more spec towards industrialization whereas it's not so easy to specialize egyptos because they do have resources like grain which is agricultural iron which is industrial and salt which is commercial so there's a bit of diversification there meanwhile latium as well <laughs> suffers from the same problem as egyptos uh it is a really estia province however you do have wine which is agricultural uh fish over here um which is shown as livestock because of the roman choice of building which is also agricultural salt which is commercial so of course you know, Latium cannot be specialized that much. However, Latium or any province for that matter in the hands of a Roman player is going to be good regardless because Roma gets a temple that 
you know, gives wealth from all sources and not just commerce or some specific, uh, you know, some specific discipline of economy. And of course, finally, Hellas uh, would be the fourth S tier province in my ranking system. And not because they are, you know, having bad resources. I mean, marble is pretty good. It does give commercial wealth fish. Uh, it's not that great. Athena is a great settlement. All of these are historical settlements, so they get some special bonuses as well to their main settlement building. However, the reason why they do not fare so well against their other counterparts is that they are simply just three regions in the province. However, for a three region province, they are pretty powerful. And, uh, yeah, so now let's focus our attention to the main issue at hand, and that is dealing with this deadlock over here. And in order to do that, we are going to move our armies as close as we can. And I'm pretty sure both of these armies can fight, so we are going to have to try to get our entire armies close enough. Gonna move hard to Parsa really close. Gonna rotate my camera a little bit for the first time so that they can get as close as possible. Closer still. Okay, perfect. And then finally hit that end key to reposition my camera. Finally move with hard one Pathia. These guys should retreat, which is good. And uh, they are quite uh, depleted, so we can actually just attack them with both of our hard armies. And it should be a very easy battle over here. And I could auto-resolve this one. However, I'm going to fight it. It's not going to be a big challenge. As you can see, we do have a lot of nomadic horse archers. And I'm not going to show this battle. However, I'm just going to quick save over here. Jump into the battle and see you all once the battle is done. Alright, welcome back. And we have dealt with that army over there. We just lost 13 units. Very good battle. We're going to go ahead and enslave all the captives. We could kill. The enemy of our enemy will like me more. So we're just going to go ahead and kill the captives a little bit to improve the loyalty that our own satraps have towards us. They are pretty loyal for now. Not that loyal, especially Bactria. Bactria has been quite problematic. However, with that being done, we can push towards Anthea. Auto resolve is quite bad. Now, Anthea tends to be one of those buggy cities uh, in which the enemy can go underground and pretty much the battle, especially if you don't have a time limit, can pretty much end quite badly. So I'm going to move my armies up. Hopefully the auto resolve will be about 90%. It's not, so I'm going to have to fight this battle. But what I'm going to do is I am going to reduce the time limit fight the battle. I'm not going to show this battle. It's not going to be that difficult, honestly, to fight this battle, even though they do have a full army. And of course, they have the garrison unit as well. Uh, what I could do is just simply control the small army and therefore just my army will have to fight this army. And after that is done, the battle will end. But before I hop into the battle, I am going to go into the uh, game settings and put the battle time limit as 20 minutes. So that the glitch will not force me to accept a defeat, which I do believe is really bad. And yeah, I will see you once I do conquer Anthea. Okay, down goes the garrison of Anthea. We are going to go ahead and just simply occupy the settlement so that we get some replenishment going on. And with that, we have reached our next Imperium level. And I also guess our influence is is low okay so that is good um meanwhile over here we can turn off the taxation in this province go ahead convert a couple of buildings we can dismantle this one dismantle all of them except of course the port what we do want to actually do is we can we have another edict so we can go ahead get that commercial stimulation edict of course in asia minor and we can also hire some governor generals for Asia Minor. Samez is off the House of Karen, so we are going to go ahead, raise a fleet. Put him over there in Ephesos. Rename him to Patish. 
six Ephesus. Perfect. That is five Pergamon. We have to correct the spellings. I just remembered that. Pathish 8. So we can get also Pathish 7 Rhodos. And I do believe Hiran is a good guy. As I did see, he has that growth rate. And while Asia Minor, I do regard to be the best province in game as far as economy is concerned. One of their major weakness is actually their growth rate. So I believe this guy has some growth rate modifiers. So that's good. Plus 3 growth rate. We're going to park him over there in Rodos. Meanwhile, down here in the south, I didn't actually describe. I have recruited a new army, Horde 5 Syria. And what he's basically doing is just uh, building up some settlers in anticipation to move them up north in order to, you know, settle them down into Thracia in order to replenish our armies there. Perhaps use Thracia as a forward base. I had hope for Nicomedia to be that forward base however as you can see Nicomedia is really suffering in terms of uh, their supplies speaking of supplies what we do also want is to actually have yet another character let's say Bashir restate the legacy of the navy one path here and what we can actually do is build a supply ship so we can keep our army supplied via sea and that is uh, going to be quite useful Meanwhile, let's have a quick look at our provinces before we go ahead and end the very first turn. It has been a long first turn of pushing back against the deadlock. And I will see you all in the next turn or probably in the end turn if these armies do decide to attack me. And in order to prevent them from doing so, what I am going to do is move up my armies all, bunch them all close together. Perfect. And I can move this army up as well. Perhaps move this army a little bit away. Hopefully they do attack uh, one of my uh, siege based armies. And over here, character has leveled up. So we are going to go ahead and take some army traditions. Quickly look at all our characters. All of them have leveled up. And of course, the uh, supplies over here are getting reduced really fast. And a way to deal with that is actually to put this army into the port over here. As they were consuming minus 193 and now it's minus 155. It's not that much better, but it is better. So perhaps we should be able to last for about two to three turns before our supplies run out over here. However, we don't have to worry about that as we are building a fleet with a supply ship that will be able to supply our land-based armies in Thracia. Welcome back to the future. We do have a noble death. And I do believe it would be one of our governor generals. Alright, so we have lost the governor general of Prasfa. Quick look at our politics to see which character did we exactly lose. It is one of the other house nobles. Uh, I'm going to see over here. It's plus five wealth from all sources from House of Karen. That is quite good. However, we are just going to quickly marry off this character. See what uh, benefits they have. Okay. We are going to hire this character as well. From the House of Karen. And... Ashur Banipal, we are going to put him into Prasva. Ashur Banipal, reinstate the legacy of Patish at Prasva. That's great. He has leveled up, of course. And we are going to go ahead and give him some of those city governor traits. We can level him up a bit more. So we could go for improving his public order a little bit as well as the adept tradesmen meanwhile give him some more public order if we can as well as that ambitious magistrate household and as you can see our economy is quite high for now and that is because i've actually turned up my taxation to medium for just a short number of turns until i can accumulate a little bit of a treasury and then upgrade my entire province so this is quite important to pull off if um, you know if you are looking to quickly get a bit of money so that you can upgrade your provinces and then you can turn your taxes back down to low 
in order to maximize that growth rate. Okay, very quickly, we are going to have a look at all of our provinces as well. And that is looking quite good for now. Meanwhile, in Rhodos, uh, the garrison is slowly building up. It is going to take a while. And once this building is completed, the garrison should be quite full. However, our army over there has also fully replenished. We can move him out, but I am going to stick him into Rhodos for now. Since uh, I do need that army to, uh, you know, protect the city from any sort of uh, naval invasion. We are seeing the Athenian tyranny slowly moving their way towards the Bosphoran Straits. I have no idea what they actually, uh, what they actually intend to achieve over here. Meanwhile, a quick look at Thracia. In the next turn, we should run out of supplies. We do have a bit of population over here, so we can replenish in this turn. And uh, pretty much not much to replenish. All of our armies are fully replenished, with the exception, of course, of this army over here. What I am going to do, however, is going to spread out a little bit so that, you know, we don't consume as lot. I'm sorry. So that we don't consume a lot of supplies here in Antia. And uh, one of the ways to do that is to actually conquer another settlement that's close by so we can kind of share the supply load between these two provinces. Meanwhile, over here, our satrapies are really negating the benefits that we can receive from this supply pit. And uh, I don't really like how that is going. Our satrapies are being more of a hindrance than a help. They are taking a lot of uh, attrition as well, so that's not good. Meanwhile, over here, they do have four arm, uh, three armies and, uh, you know, we can't really attack. I do want to attack them when they are quite weak and not capable of, uh, you know, launching us into a massive battle since I do want to minimize my casualties. However, Odessos does have just 15, like, you know, 15 um, uh, stack garrison. So I could attack Odessos and I am actually going to do that with the safest option possible with my Shahanshah. Move him up towards Odessos, attack the capital of the Odrishan kingdom. And I could auto-resolve this one. And I am going to go ahead and auto-resolve this one. And with Odessos, I could just peacefully occupy it for that... Uh, extra bit of uh, population but I am going to go ahead instead and loot the settlement and the reason I am going to loot the settlement it is of course that uh, decotration culture but I do want to increase my slave modifier in order to get uh, better economy meanwhile we are going to go ahead and quickly repair the buildings over here we could just dismantle the building repair this one go ahead dismantle this one as well as well as this one and now we just have three armies over here. Replenishment might be an issue. So what I am actually going to do. Is I could technically just move this army quite close over here. Since attacking Pulpodeva would probably be a really good thing. We could attack Pulpodeva in the future and then. Straight away march to Nesos and that will put the Tolisto, Tolisto Bogia in a really tight situation. Meanwhile move up our dignitaries. Keep moving up our dignitaries. We are trying to slowly convert the province as well. We can move up our spy. See what's happening over here. And uh, I don't see any hostile armies so that is good news. However over here I could be attacked. And of course I am running out of supplies as well. What I do need to do is actually move my fleet into Antia. And now this fleet should kind of try and supply these guys via the fleet. And uh, yeah, that will be good. However, with that, we are going to take a quick look at our politics. Um, nothing much going on over here. We are still beloved of the tribes, however, just slightly. So I do want to decrease or continue to decrease my influence as much as I can. And uh, speaking of politics, we could also engage in some character improvement. So we are going to improve the zeal of this character and then send her on a vacation. 
Perfect. Meanwhile, this character over here is slowly acquiring Gravitas and will soon be able to marry. We, we have uh, gone ahead and assassinated a few more characters, uh, especially female characters. And, uh, and not that I have anything against the other gender, to be frank, but I just want to minimize the f size of my family so that I don't have incredibly high uh, influence. And of course, male characters are a lot more important than female characters, uh, as the game is kind of designed. And uh, meanwhile, over here, this stack is done uh, recruiting for now. I could recruit a couple more. And then in the future, I could march him over towards Anthea. And so with that, I am going to go ahead and end the turn. And I will see you all in the future when I am ready to push my offensive into Thracia. Welcome back to the future. Athenoi has landed in our provinces and really Asia Minor and Thracia is a flashpoint and uh, what do we have here allies confirm target yes we do have a characters over here we do want our allies to hopefully try to hit these guys and we'll have to see how that goes um, meanwhile the situation over here these armies are starting to take a little bit of attrition since we are out of supplies in Anthea. However, our armies are being supplied by the ships, so that is good news. Meanwhile, we have also moved our uh, other army and uh, disbanded all the settlers within Odessos as well as Anthea. And as you can see, our population is looking quite good in both of those provinces. Uh, another noteworthy development is that we are in the final technology of our construction tree and we can get level 4 settlements for now. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly check all of the provinces that I can upgrade. Uh, focusing on, of course, the economic provinces first. And I am accumulating a bit more money. I don't want to upgrade any of the other settlements. Keep in mind, these do cost quite a fair bit to upgrade so we could upgrade this one because it does give food so that's quite useful meanwhile go ahead upgrade all of these buildings perfect and we do have about 135,000 in the bank so that is quite good meanwhile over here we can go ahead and get that sanitation building uh, our capital can also improve I mean I don't really want to spend on that how much will it cost me 10,000, 9,000, 5,000, 5,000. So we're looking about 30,000. And I really don't want to do that. I do want to accumulate a bit more of treasury and then go on a spending spree. So with that, I think I am done as far as the... Um, can go ahead and upgrade that temple rather. It's only 4,000. Um, with that, I think I am done with province management for now. So quick look at our politics. All right, our influence has dropped quite significantly. That is good news. Uh, meanwhile, our characters are slowly leveling up. This character has reached the maximum zeal, so all that's left to do is to improve her cunning by sending her on vacations. And uh, this character over here, we can start improving her zeal. And perhaps in the next turn, we can marry off uh, Naram Suen. With that, I am happy with politics. We're going to have a quick look of the armies that we can upgrade. Army 1 Parthia can be upgraded to that maximum level. Wonderful. Since these generals are maxed out, I don't really need uh, our champion in that army anymore. Just a quick look at the other armies. Uh, the general of Horde for Syria and Army 2 Mesopotamia is not fully leveled up. And... Uh, However, they do have a champion in the army that's helping them to level up. Meanwhile, Horde 2 Parsa is fully leveled up. Horde 3 Mesopotamia as well, fully leveled up. I think it might be the right time to go ahead and recruit some more armies. And uh, what we are going to do is recruit a couple more Horde-based Horde armies. Go ahead, uh, raise the army over here. And I could have actually reinstated the legacy. However, 
I'm just going to rename this the same as the one that we have in the legacy. And uh, quick look over here. They have around 500 nobles, 400 nobles. I'm guessing Nisa should have quite good. I'm going to go ahead and get these guys in Nisa. Quick look at the generals we can have. I think this guy is a general. This guy is pretty good, so we can get him. Can go ahead and actually change the name from Horde 6. Um, let's say Horde 6 Asia. Alright. Let's get Horde 5 Syria back into... We have Saluku as well as we have this guy. So we can reinstate the legacy. Perfect. This guy is pretty good because, you know, he does have that trait that gives a reduced morale. Go ahead, give him some good traits. And meanwhile, even with this character, we're going to see what we can give him. Mm, we can give him the replenishment rate or the cavalry recruitment cross. That's quite powerful, actually. There we go. All right, perfect. And we do want another army based, uh, you know, army that is sieged focus and we can recruit Saluku. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit Saluku. Raise army. Perfect. In Artha Koana. Rename him Horde 3. Or sorry, Army 3 Syria. Excellent. And we can't really recruit any troops for that army, but we can recruit for this army. So we are going to go ahead and get as many of these troops as we can for this turn. Perfect. And with that, I think I am ready to go ahead and end the turn, but I can see what's going on over here. I think one of the things I could do is kind of try to ignore these armies. They are taking attrition, so they shouldn't be much of a threat. Uh, and I really do want to conquer Pulpadeva, to be honest. Because if I do conquer Pulpadeva, that will put a little bit of pressure on the Tolistobogiai. However, they are like, you know, a level 20 settlement in terms of garrison. They also have a full army garrison within the settlement. Um, meanwhile, culturally, we are slowly converting. We are at 27% and in about 4 to 5 turns, we should have Parni as the dominant culture. Meanwhile, over here in Pergamon, Asia, we are still at a Hellenic cultural dominance. In uh, Bithynia, at Pontus, things aren't looking that great. Culturally speaking, the rest of our empire is pretty well off, so that is good. And without any further ado, I am going to go ahead and end the turn. Just have a quick look at what is the development over here. We are facing a bit of a deadlock. However, if we get rid of these four armies, the one in Pulpadeva, two of them that are over here and one of them that's over here, we should be able to quickly uh, march our way and conquer the entire Hellenistic world. All right, welcome back to the future. Yet another Athenian force has landed. And this time they choose to land near Ephesos. And the uh, problem of landing in Ephesos is that they could technically attack Pergamon. Pergamon isn't as strongly garrisoned to deal with this, uh, you know, heavily stacked army. However, we do have a horde-based army over here, Horde 3 Mesopotamia, who will deal with them quite soon. Meanwhile, over here... These guys are continuing to take a lot more damage, so we can go ahead and push our offensive. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Move up Horde 1 Parthia a little bit close. And then attack with Horde 2 Parsa. They should retreat. And actually, they do not retreat. I can just auto-resolve this one, I believe. Let's go ahead, just quickly save. Hopefully we don't lose any of our cataphract units. And I will auto-resolve it. Down goes both the armies. Absolutely good result. And we did manage to lose a camel cataphract and a cataphract unit. That kind of sucks. However, we do have... Uh, 
we are in the process of building up over here our stable so we should be able to rectify that quite soon I'm gonna move back our armies in order to replenish perfect and then meanwhile this army could technically reach Anthea so I might want to actually we'll have to see I could attack Pulpadeva now uh, that is going to be a good thing to do let's go ahead just get this army out of the ambush stance go ahead attack Pulpadeva the auto resolve is going to be horrible however I can move this army up ahead as well in order to support him now the auto resolve should be a lot more favorable however i'm not going to auto resolve this i am going to fight the battle it's going to be a major battle and before i actually go ahead and do that a quick look at our provinces slowly building up i can over here build a temple all right and over here I could build a sanitation building. It's no, no longer required. I don't need growth rate. However, it also offers empire maintenance, which is quite useful. Meanwhile, over here, Horde 6 Asia has completely um, built up. So we are going to move him up towards the UDI. They have been a bit of a problem, a bit of a nuisance really. And uh, we are going to have to deal with them quite soon. Meanwhile, the army at Nisa is slowly building up. But what we do want to do is prioritize building up this army over here. We can go ahead and do that. And then hire about the remaining in Horde 5 Syria. Perfect. And you might have noticed I didn't take the Bactrian Hoplites and that's because I will have access to the Pontic Hoplites which I will use for this army. And with that I think I am quite done for the eastern section of our empire. Meanwhile a quick look at the west once more. We definitely have to attack this Athenian stack. Uh, it is quite risky to just leave it. However, the only way it can attack is it has to actually pass through our land. So I could just leave it there, let it take some attrition. And uh, yeah, hope for the best. Meanwhile, I could just go ahead and attack this settlement. And I will see you all in the battle. Alright, welcome to the battle. We haven't deployed any of our units. We are going to quickly turn off the fire at will. And we are going to fast forward until our entire army comes into the battle. Meanwhile, we can quickly set up the units that we can set up. Move our generals over here. Perfect. Our archer units, our horse archers can be in group 3. Move them up over here. Meanwhile, our elephants are in group 4. We can move them over here. Archers group 2 can come forward do have group 5 over here the swords unit turn off that fire at will toggle on the melee mode move our hoplites into two groups group 6 and group 7 get group 6 up here and group 7 you're going to come here meanwhile these two catapults can finally come over here I can actually set them up as two groups and create two breaches in the wall. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. You group 8, you're going to come here. Group 6, you're going to protect these guys. Group 7, put you over here. You guys over here. I'm actually going to name this one. Take it out group 7 and the other 4 group 6 because group 6 is going to be on the left hand side meanwhile our elephants can kind of position themselves here and we can position another group of elephants over here I did forget to turn off the uh, time limit so this is not good 
We have to quickly just march forward. Start start fighting the battle. Just uh, 15 minutes left to fight this battle. That's not good at all. Move up our horse archers as well. Meanwhile, some of our swords unit can go ahead, pick up that, move up our hoplites real close, artillery as well, the other hoplites over here, and the artillery over here, quickly, hurry up, okay, these guys have gotten into that, so we can issue the order for them to go ahead and attack those gates. Meanwhile, the remaining troops can form up behind them. Fifteen minutes, however, we are slowly moving towards getting that completed. These elephants can move closer over here. And group number four elephants can move in this direction. Generals can move up ahead. Massive battle. Can go ahead. Group three. Wonderful. What we do need is for our artillery to get close enough. Can't really see them right now. At least if we get our artillery on one side. You know what? This artillery can come here. I want you to face this way. And the other one, since you're closer to this side, you can come here. Come on. Perfect. These hoplite, what are you doing? Come over here. Form up over here. I have about 12 minutes for this battle to end. This could be quite a disaster, really. I mean, forgot to turn off that setting thanks to the stupid settlement of Anthea. But I do believe that we can win. If we manage to make that breach real quick and get our elephants into the city, that's going to be key. Go ahead, deploy our troops over here. They can go in that defensive Testudo formation. units has used all its ammunition yeah defensive testudo is a little bit different to the roman testudo can't really move i'm guessing the roman testudo is an offensive one one of our units has used all its ammunition what is up with these units Get out of defensive testudo. Go ahead. Perfect. Artillery, are you in position? You're almost in position. We have about 10 minutes left for this battle. And right after this battle, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that setting. Deploy these guys in that hoplite formation. You can do the same for these guys over here. General, go ahead, inspire the whole army. You on the other side, you can inspire the whole army as well. Wonderful. All of our swords unit actually, now that you're here, go ahead, burn down the gates. Okay, these artillery are in position, go ahead, attack those walls. Hurry up. What about the other artillery? Slowly making its way. 9%. It's not looking good, hurry up. We are all out of archer ammunition. And really, it's the elephants that are going to have to win the day for us over here. One of our units has used all its ammunition. 
So all of our archers as well as cavalry have used their ammunitions. Meanwhile, quick look over here. We are 28%. We are following quite quickly below that 10%. Uh, sorry, 10 minutes mark. That's not good. Go ahead, burn down the gates. Come on. You can do it. Ninety eight percent. Oh, that's really unfortunate. And it should be at a hundred percent for now. Excellent. So we're gonna take these two troops, go up ahead, keep attacking, keep these two troops down here. They're gonna go through the gates. Hurry up. Come on, man. Fifty one percent, that's horrible. Keep firing. I need that breach. 60. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Meanwhile, this artillery is almost in position. Go ahead, form up, form up, hurry, please. Archers can move back. Cavalry can also move back. Gates are burnt, but we haven't uh, managed to neutralize this area, so we can't charge in our melee troops just as yet. Eight minutes to go. This artillery is really failing. It's pretty much been there the entire battle. 74%. That is horrible. Meanwhile, go ahead. Hit this artillery. Hurry up. Oh my god. Eight more minutes to go. This is not looking good. Seventy-four percent. Come on. Eighty-four. Okay, just a couple more volleys. Really, is all we need. Come on, come on, come on. Ninety-three. Just another more. Come on. All right. The gates are slowly neutralizing, so that is great. nine percent of this wall come on you artillery piece turn off your fire at will didn't realize you had that good these elephants are in position we're going to quickly charge them through get these guys out of hoplite formation so that they do not block the elephants Meanwhile, these gates have been neutralized. We can charge through the gates. Legionaries are doing quite well, actually, so far in this battle. It is really our siege equipment that has let us down. However, the one on the right is doing quite good. It's already at 74%. Go ahead, quickly charge over here with our elephant units. Keep charging over there. Just keep moving across. You are going to do your damage as you move through the enemy units. So all you have to do is just keep moving across. Try to route as many units as you can. I don't really care for your losses. But the objective is to try and hit as many of the units. Meanwhile, this unit can come around. Perfect. Excellent. Keep moving. Keep moving. We have created a breach over here. We can get these elephants into the fight as well. Hurry up. Group 4. Pretty much between you and the other group. Get our generals all the way up in the front. We do have about 5 minutes to go. And suddenly this battle, which should have been a very easy battle, has become so much more interesting because of the time limit. Go ahead, keep attacking, come on. Nice, group 9 has made it into the settlement. Go ahead, attack that blob, please. Come on, elephants. Pathfinding can't screw me over here. I'm not going to lose this battle due to pathfinding, come on. Go ahead, charge over here, elephants. Keep moving. Group 3, I want you to come here. 
Hail Mary, really, over here. Wonderful. Group 4 elephants, you've done quite well. These elephants, meanwhile, go ahead, charge in that direction. Keep hitting. It's the elephants that really will win us this battle. We have just about 4 minutes to go. Group 3, go ahead, hit that unit over there. Group 4, come on, hit. Route as many of these units as you can. Group 9, charge back into these units. Group 4, keep charging. Get across, hurry up. Group 9, you're going to keep charging as well. Group 3, get over there. Three more minutes to go. Really tight over here. The battle, is turning in our favor. battle is turning in our favor. That is great. That is great news indeed. Go ahead. Hurry up. Okay, our cavalry has made it into the city over there. Group 9, come on, keep hurrying up. Group 4, I want you to push. Keep pushing through. Two more minutes remain, come on. Come on, please. Group 3, cavalry, come on. Gonna hit that unit. Group 9, hurry up. Two more minutes remain. Okay, this unit is losing decisively. Good. Group 4. Elephants are going to take a lot of casualties in this, unfortunately. Nothing much I can do. Okay, group 3. Go ahead, hit this side. Archers, come on in. Might as well. Okay, wonderful over here. We are going to move here, back here. All of our elephants put you in group 4. Hurry up, hit this unit, please. Just one more minute, come on. No. Stop being so slow. Wonderful. Come on. Break that unit. Whew. Okay, we got this. We got this. Wonderful. <laughs> wow. Alright, I guess I'll see you all in the campaign then. Alright, welcome back to the campaign. We have conquered Pulpadeva. Took hardly uh, any casualties. Some of our elephants did take a bit of casualties. But as you can see, look at those kills on those elephants. This elephant unit together got about a thousand kills. This elephant unit got about 1,300 kills. So out of the total, we have done 2,500 kills. And uh, we lost only 318 men. And we pretty much took out 8,261. We are going to go ahead and... Uh, loot the settlement uh, although i do believe i should just peacefully occupy this one but you know what i am actually going to go ahead and loot the settlement and uh yeah quickly go ahead dismantle all the buildings repair the ones that we can repair this one can become dismantle this dismantle dismantle actually this one yeah i'm gonna go ahead and dismantle all of them Go ahead, improve this building over here. This army could reach all the way towards Anthea. That could be slightly problematic. However, that is what it is. Uh, meanwhile, over here, this army can't really move anywhere. It's going to take some attrition, so I'm going to leave it there. Meanwhile, these armies are also busy taking attrition. We are really playing the supply game real close over here, and Kind of the supply game as well as our more decisive battles in this episode have helped us gain the advantage over the deadlock. And yeah, with that, I think I'm ready to end the turn. Go ahead and end the episode as well. And so I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, please like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love.